Today we're going to take a look at the Micro PA50 Gen 3, this time on Ham Radio Tube. And here it is, the Micro PA50 Gen 3. I purchased this from a company called Ham Geek. I have no affiliation whatsoever with any of this. This is all just... I paid for it and here's the review, uh, but I, my experience is very good. I paid $186, there was no tax, there's no tariffs that I'm aware of. I opted for the free shipping uh, and I actually got this. I ordered this October 28th and this got to my mailbox November 10th. So 13 days from the time of order, I got this. And the, the tracking was fantastic. I was able to track this the entire course and you could see every single step of the way where this amplifier was. So shout out to Ham Geek. I have no idea who you are, but uh, I feel your service is good. So what do we have here? We have the Micro PA50. It's a 50 watt HF power amplifier that goes from 80 meters to 10 meters. And it is powered with a uh, XT60, I believe. So you get a supplied uh, power lead with it that just has nothing on the end. So I opted to put some power poles on there. We have our clearly indicated transmitter and antenna SO239s, kind of a bummer they're not BNC, but uh, my other amplifier is the same way, so I just have uh, PL259 to BNC female adapters that I keep on there. On the back, we can see we have a fan here that's gonna keep it nice and cool. We've got some air intakes there. We've got a nice, I, I don't know what kind of screen it is, but it's a screen that's gonna show us all the information from frequency readout, temperature, SWR, power, everything you wanna know about the amplifier right on that little screen there. We have a function button that's gonna cycle through all kinds of different functions and set different settings. We will show you all of that a little bit later. And we also have this accessory port, which I don't know how this works. I, I guess I'm not smart enough, but basically from my understanding, if you have an accessory port on the back of your radio, which I thought my 705 did, but that's the ALC, uh, this amplifier should follow the bands. When you change bands on your radios, is, is, is how I understand it, uh, it will change bands. Not a big deal though, if you don't have that, which I do not, uh, because this is RF sensing. Now, we wanna be mindful, do not put more than five watts of drive power into this, okay? And also, we wanna use this with resonant antennas or if you have a tuner after this, you wanna put the amp in bypass, tune your antenna and then turn the amplifier PA section back on because there's a protection circuit in here. If your SWR goes over 2.0 to one, uh, it's gonna go into protection, so. Uh, that's actually really good because it's going to protect the amp from high SWR and protect it from blowing up. So uh, very, very lightweight. This is actually a little bit smaller than my MXP50. And uh, just to give you a size comparison, there is a Baofeng for scale. So now let's hop over on my uh, radio desk and we're going to show you all the features and power and put this thing through the test. The first thing you're gonna notice when you plug in your micro PA50, it's just gonna turn on once it's plugged into your power supply. If you wanna turn it off, you unplug it. There's no actual on or off button on this amplifier, but that's okay. Uh, taking a look at the screen, we get a nice readout. You can see we have our power indicator there. Then we have our SWR. Underneath that, we're gonna have our frequency readout that does only go to one decimal. Then we have our voltage here, our input voltage. We have the temperature of the amplifier in Celsius. Up top, this is a blank screen. Blank means the amplifier, the power amplifier is on, meaning the amplifier stage is on. You can put it in bypass. This function button's gonna do all that. We're, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, that 300 there, that is basically your break-in speed in milliseconds, if you will. And then we can see the band readout there saying we're on 40 meters right now. I'm on 7.040 megahertz. And then this auto here basically is just auto sensing, but if you want, uh, if you have an accessory port on the back of your radio, it will follow the bands as I understand it. Um, so if you switch bands to 20 meters, it would just automatically change to 20 meters. Not really a big deal, because this is RF sensing. So what does this function button do? Well, first and foremost, if we long press this, that is how we're gonna turn the power amplifier 
on or off in terms of amplification. So right now it's in bypass. If I key up, I've got three and a half watts coming out of the ASU FTX, and you can see three and a half watts. SWR is one. Uh, the frequency is seven. You can see our voltage, everything, uh, because the power amplifier stage is not on. If we long press it again, now the PA is on, and notice that black screen there uh, being just blank. But if we key up three and a half watts, there's 47 watts going out. SWR is 1.29. And if we look at the voltage, you can see a little voltage sag coming out of the battery. That's fine. It's doing the thing. Now I've seen a lot of previous versions of this amplifier and a lot of complaints about SWR protection. This does have SWR protection. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but basically if your SWR is over 2.0 to 1, and over 10 watts, it's going to go into a protection stage and it's going to beep a lot. And you just simply press this button once to reset the override protection. If we press the button twice, you can see we're changing that, uh, is it the QSK delay? I think it is. And that goes up to a thousand. I'll show you how that works here in a bit and then full break in. If for some reason we want to change the bands manually, we can press this button three times. And there you can see we're cycling through the bands. Pushing it four times will mute the beeper, which is basically your protection notification. You can see the little speaker off icon there. Do it four times and the beep is back on. Pressing the button five times it's going to change your brand of radio. So you have Zygu, Yesu, and Icom, and then you have Auto. This button is a little finicky. I think it's going to take a little getting used to uh, memorizing how many times you're supposed to push it. And sometimes the, the pushes don't actually register, so you, you change something uh, inadvertently. So uh, that is kind of a little quirk about it. I don't see myself really pushing this button a whole heck of a lot of times during actual operation though. If we push it six times, that says display mode. Let's see what that does. Oh, so that's going to be the meter, which is RT is real time. And pH is peak hold. They recommend if you're doing sideband, keep the meter on peak hold. And if you're doing uh, CW, put it on RT. Seven pushes does nothing. Eight presses doesn't seem to do anything though on the old menu. It says on off 10 and 15 meters. Nine presses does nothing. And 10 presses voids your warranty. Seriously. It puts it into unlimited mode, which I guess uh, basically just opens up the power wide open so there's no limiters or anything. And uh, yeah, the manual very sternly says warning entering this function will void your warranty. So don't push it 10 times. So now let's take a look at the power output. I also want to take a look at the current. So we've got a meter here in this top left uh, slice of the meter there is going to show the current. And I have this connected to a battery box, that one right there, that has a 30 amp hour BioNO inside. Standby current's pretty low at 0.1 amp just sitting there, uh, but if I just tap it really quick to get the fan on, it pulls about 0.17 amps at idle with the fan running. So we're on 80 meters now, we'll go ahead and key up, uh, but first let's lower our power and we'll key up and then we'll see how much drive power it takes to get this to 50 watts and we'll also watch the current. So there we are, we're at, uh, there's one watt and let's crank this up until we see 50. So on 80 meters drive, about 2.4, 2.5 watts there. We're getting 50 watts. We're showing 48.4 and 49.6, and we're pulling 6.95 amps. And 40 meters, let's see what we get here. About four watts. We're getting a little over 50 there, so really about 3.7, 3.8 watts, 3.6, somewhere in there we're getting the 50 watts, pulling 6.85 amps. Now my antenna's not that resonant on 30 meters, and I wanna show you what the amp does here. So we've got the power down real low. Notice we're 2.1 SWR on the meter there, 
but if we turn the power up, once that amplifier gets over 10 watts, we get that error there. So that's, that's the amplifier protecting itself, and then we just press the function button, and that clears the uh, warning. 40 meters will start off with a watt of drive power, getting 11 out. And with five watts in, we're getting almost 50 out, pulling a little over seven amps of current there. I'm not quite resonant on 17 either, so we'll just drive it with a watt. We're getting seven out, but as uh, we saw on 30 meters, we get that protection coming in. No problem there. 15 meters, let's start off at a watt. And we'll go up. There's five watts, we're getting 45 out and pulling 6.2 amps. My antenna is not resident on 12, so we'll skip right to 10 meters. And with one watt of drive, getting 13 out. And five watts, about 48 watts, that says 49, and pulling just under six and a half amps. Now one thing that was one of the first things I noticed when testing this amp, if we go ahead and key up again, the fan kicks on. And it's not the quietest fan in the world. Let me get the microphone closer to it. It's definitely a loud guy. Well, I don't know if that'll really be an issue when we're outside with all just the outside noise, but we'll find out. So we were on 10 meters. Let's go down to uh, 20 meters. We're on single sideband now. I've got the power at three and a half watts for this test. And just watch, this still says we're on 10 meters. Kilo 8 Micro Mio Delta testing one, two. It just automatically switches. Now you can see we're on 20 meters. Go down to 40 meters. Kilo 8 Micro Mio Delta testing one, two. Just like that. RF sensing, automatic. No extra cables, just your coax and a power cable. Now for you CW operators, you can adjust the amount of delay for your break-in keying. So right now it's at 300 milliseconds, I believe that is, and you can kind of listen to the relays. And the delay there, by double tapping this button, you can lengthen that. I think it goes up to a thousand. So a much longer delay before it kind of goes out of that. But if we want full break in, we just go to where it says break in. So how does the amplifier actually work out in the field? Well, as far as setup, it couldn't be any easier. I have a short run of RG316 going from my ASU FTX into the amplifier. Then I put a choke on the antenna port, plugged in my Messi and Poloni Airborne 5. Plug in the power cable. I do have an inline watt meter so we can see how much power we're using. And I can tell you it's just as easy as it can possibly be. I'm using an X10 of 40 meter N fed half wave, so I decided to operate single sideband and FT8 on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Uh, my first contact on 10 meters was at 2024 Zulu, and we made 54 contacts in 39 minutes 11 seconds. Then I switched over to digital starting on 10 meters again with FT8, and I had I've had no problems whatsoever. The Power was consistent, band switching was consistent. Power was a little bit lower on 10 meters. I was, uh, after setting the ALC and everything, I was pushing more in the 30 watt range, but I'm being more mindful of not overdriving the amp and concerned about putting out a clean signal than I am about pushing this amplifier to get all 45 or 50 watts out of it. On 15 meters, it puts out a little bit more power. We were uh, in the 40 watt range there. The whole activation made plenty of contacts there. Moving down to 20 meters, much the same. I think we had our highest output, but I think this antenna is probably more resonant on 20 meters than any other band, uh, closer to that 50 watts. Uh, never driving it, 
with more than about four and a half watts, never came, never came to five watts. And moving down to 40 meters, uh, I was only driving it with three and a half watts and getting about 43, 45 watts, somewhere in that uh, neighborhood output. Another thing to note, the fan. On single sideband, during the pile up, uh, yeah, you can hear it, but when you're kind of in the, the heat of the moment there, it, it really wasn't noticeable at all. It's not an issue. Uh, you do hear it, especially kind of in, in some down times. It's, it's there. It's, it's going the whole time. So uh, per my watt meter, it really was pulling about 0.15 amps the entire time. Not a big deal. And we used just over two amp hours of capacity in the not quite two hours of operating time. So... Overall, I'm very pleased. Uh, another thing about the fan, it did a very good job of keeping the amplifier cool. I never saw the temperature rise above about 42 degrees Celsius. It is, uh, it's a little warm to the touch, uh, but that's it. I, I think it did, I think it performed overall very fantastic. So does it work? Yes. Now, another thing in my single sideband QSO is I had the opportunity to let everybody know I was trying out a new amplifier. And for those that had a waterfall, let me know, is it, is it over modulating? Can you see any nasty uh, spurs or, or just, uh, you know, look like it's overdriven on the waterfall? And I had a few people answer, they all said it looked clean, but I'm gonna go with what Neil Kilo 7 Sierra Echo November says, because he uh, and I have worked each other many, many times, and I, and I trust, even though I've never met him, I trust what he says. So take a listen to Neil. Kilo 7 Sierra Echo November. Well, look at you, uh, Neil. How are you? I'm good, Mike. How about you? I am fantastic. I'm, I'm playing with a new uh, QRP 50-watt amplifier. It's the Micro PA 50 third gen. How's it sounding? Sounds really good. You're about uh, to right at that an S9, and uh, how do you, everything sounds good. Okay, very good. Anything uh, disturbing on the scope I should be worried about? No, uh, it looks <laughs> Very good. Well, I trust you over all others. So <laughs> you're uh, you're about an S9 plus 10 here to me today. So overall, even though I don't have the scientific testing to actually see if this is in fact creating spurious emissions like some of these other ones in the past have, per this very unscientific data, we can kind of say that it's clean. Overall though, I'm very happy with this amplifier. This is the first time I've used it, so keep that in mind, but uh, I would say that my $186 is money well spent. It's a lot easier to hook up to your radio because you don't need a keying cable or a PTT cable to connect to the radio, so one less thing to have with you. And it's a great thing to have with your QRP radios if you just, you really like operating that radio, but you wanna get a little more oomph out of it. I'll leave a link to where I bought it to HamGeek. It's not affiliated in any way, shape, or form. I don't know them, they don't know me, but that's where I bought it if you wanna pick one of these up. Until next time, my name is Mike, KMRD, saying 73. Good outro, bye.